isa ka ba sa mga naapektuhan this pandemic financially? Nag-close down din ba ang business mo dahil hindi siya considered as one of the essentials? Nag-start ka din ba mag-work from home to flatten the curve? Paano naman kung ikaw ang nagkaroon ng unwanted curves? Ano gagawin mo? Sa episode natin today, pag-uusapan natin yan and more. I'm your host, Lian, and you are watching You Normal to Try! New Normal Sobra ko excited sa mga guests natin for tonight kasi personal ko silang kilala. Actually, sila nag-host sa amin nung pumunta kami sa Longa po. At sobrang happy, sobrang kulit, sobrang saya ng pamilyang to. Yun yung side na alam ko. Pero sa ngayon, ang aalamin natin yung business side of things nila. Kaya yun ang aabangan natin sa show na to. Now, let's go on and welcome to Haskell. Now, let's welcome to the show, the Haskells. We have here Coach Shan, Miss Anne, and Kyle. Welcome to the show, po. How are you doing? Oh, good. We're all good, we're all good. Staying all good, po. Thank you. Uh, and we have familiar faces here who have been interviewed by our Tri-PH host. We have um, Coach Shan and Kyle. How are you after the interviews? Do you have any fans? Do you have any Mm, not much on the fence, um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a fun it was a fun interview with, with the rest of the gang. Yes, and uh, some of our friends were able to give some of their feedback with our interviews. So some of my friends were able to watch it. They enjoyed the interview though, and they were, um, they found some of the things that we said insightful, and they also gave some honest feedback regarding um, some of the things that I said. And I think that was really nice feedback that they were able to give that feedback. Mm, that's nice. And I was actually able to to watch your show. It's very informative. And we have here very pretty Miss Anne. How are you, Pa? Doing good. Very busy, but we try to find time for this show. Thank you, and thank you for having this interview with me. So here we are going to talk about your take on the business side of things. And could you tell our viewers what each of you do? Let's start with Miss Anne. I'm a jewelry designer. I design mostly diamond settings. So I mostly design unique diamond settings. Oh, that's nice. And how about Coach Shen Po? Um, I'm an uh, integrative nutritionist. So I, I basically deal with the dietary programs for uh, predominantly uh, cancer patients. And I'm also the um, an L1 coach for CrossFit. So I'm, I'm certified and registered to be able to coach for CrossFit. We have a franchise here, an affiliate here in the Long Coast City. So um, I'm full time working there also. Wow, that's really awesome, Paul. And how about Kyle? Most of my uh, time is devoted to uh, I was a gymny dad. So we we handle CrossFit. I coach um, mm -hmm. at the gym in the afternoons, two to three times a, a day from Monday to Friday and I have a small side business which helps me supply my uh, mother's side of the family with uh, washing detergent, liquid soap mm -hmm. deter um, for washing or cleaning plates and stuff like that and being able to also uh, help them. I'm also planning on helping them uh, buy chlorine to be able mm -hmm. to help their hotel so if they have any guests coming in, they have the chlorine to disinfect the shoes that come in. Oh, that's nice. Because um, you are having your own business um, as a family and as individuals. So, kamo sa po ba ang businesses nyo or lifestyle before the outbreak of the COVID nineteen? Let's start with Coach. Uh, before the COVID nineteen, it, it was easier to travel. It was easier for us to um, to go out of the country, and likewise uh, within the country, I have um, clinics in down south of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I have five areas that I visit, and basically we have almost around a total of around 1,600 patients there accumulated over a, a five-year uh, time span. So we have a lot of patients. Prior to COVID, I'm able to travel, I'm able to see them, but as soon as the, the quarantine hit, as soon as the lockdown hit, um, I'm not able to travel. 
So mm-hmm. kind of it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, that's that's a lot of patients and for you not to be able to um, meet them and those clinics, that must be very hard. How about you, Miss Anne? How was the business before and after COVID? Before COVID, it's really have a lot of clients and then suddenly we can travel also because we have clients abroad also. So we deliver jewelry from other countries. But because of COVID-19, it stopped. And at the same time, before I have a lot of sales every month, mm-hmm. uh, probably because a lot are affected because of the COVID-19. Mm. Um, not many now orders jewelry, but still, I, I still have sales every month. Mm, I and see. During COVID-19, I have sales, but it's not a lot. Mm-hmm. Just like so it's a really, really big effect, no? How about you, Kyle? Like, personally, how were you affected before and after COVID? Um, if we're talking about the business side, um, mm-hmm. it was very, it was affected a lot. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. We, I usually, I usually be I'm able to supply uh, some of the hotels and the hardware that my mother's side owns. I was able to supply it every month, month and a half. So, mm-hmm. but now, it's been for almost five months that I haven't been able to supply them because they haven't had any customers come in as much as before. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're still planning on, I'm still planning on being able to return back to them and give them their next supply, but they don't need it for another month. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not able to take in any, any income from that side of the business. But with regards mm-hmm. to the, the, the gym, um, it was slow at first, even before COVID. But after, um, we started to pick up a little bit more so more of my time is being devoted there oh that's nice kasi pati pala ikaw naapektohan dahil sa COVID na to kasi pa, al- halos lahat no naapektohan so ito um, Coach Shan as the head of the family what came into your mind when you knew that you have to close your business for the time being the clinics and the gym well, first and foremost as, as a dad and a husband um and, and a son, my mom also lives with us. Mm-hmm. First thing that came to my mind was protect the family. Uh, I needed to make sure that the business was secondary to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't really care much of it. What I wanted to do was make sure that my family was safe. Uh, my family was well fed, um, that their immune system was high. Uh, we made sure that the vitamins that was necessary to be able to fight this pandemic, I made sure by hook or by crook, to get all of it as necessary so that my family gets provided this on a daily basis. Um, we converted our dietarily from, mm-hmm. being, uh, uh, from being omnivore to, uh, to a vegetarian diet immediately during the COVID. Wow. So, so although it was, all the markets were closed, there was very mm-hmm. limited supply, we as a family spoke and we discussed, okay, we're going to eat what's there, what's available, mm-hmm. but we eat healthy. I cannot risk any one of them getting sick. I just, my, my heart cannot, I can't fathom that happening. So we went vegetarian. Uh, we were implementing the one one um, gallon of water a day mm-hmm. uh, for each family member. We were, we were and we were exercising every day. So mm-hmm. uh, we have the privilege of having the, the gym close to us. Mm-hmm. So uh, during the day, our family would go there, work out two, two and a half hours every day. And we just kept ourselves busy. Uh, mm-hmm. So really, when, when the business got hit, um, I'm very thankful I had a little bit of money saved up to be able to use it for my family for a rainy day. And this was a rainy day because we got mm-hmm. hit three months, more than three months. So my, my main focus was family immediately right after. Yeah, that's nice. Actually, I also saw the post of Ate Anne na minsan may mga, uh, mga food kayo na okra, minsan talong. Very vegetarian and it's nice kasi kahit ganun simple, ang ganda magkakapost eh. Yung parang essential pa din ang dating. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> speaking of your gym po, I also saw the post that the gym is being clean. So, ha, um, so we will be showing those pictures and uh, videos here.
Okay, so um, Koshan, how important is that for you, for keeping your gym clean? Well, one of the things with COVID-19 we have to remember is um, it can be transmitted. Studies have shown uh, via air, uh, as an aerosol, or it can also be on, on equipment. Now, being a gym, it was a, a, an idea that compacting a lot of people in one small closed area can cause the spread. So to be able to fight that, we needed to make sure that the gym was clean. So we consistently, consistently uh, uh, clean up the gym. Every time a workout happens, a class happens, right after we're disinfecting the gym. Uh, at the end of the day, we're disinfecting the gym. Uh, at least two to three times a week, we're general cleaning the gym on top of that. It's just a lot of effort. But one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we know that when our athletes come into the box or the gym to work out, they will go home safe. They work out in a safe environment, they get to go home in a safe environment. We apply that same concept at home. Mm -hmm. We try to keep our home clean. When we come out, uh, when we get home from, from traveling, shower up, take our clothes off, make sure those are washed. We try to maintain that cleanliness here at home too. So it's just an overall general idea. Keep it clean here at home, keep our box home, our family safe, our mm -hmm. athletes are safe, all of us are safe. Mm, actually, it's, it's really nice because I saw it too. It's not just cleanliness. There's also a lot of separation so that there are lines so that each athlete would have their own like, box in the box. And that's, that's really, really impressive actually. And also, I also saw that before, even if you don't have clients, um, uh, at a certain time, your family keeps doing the workout. Why is that? Uh, again, it's just the idea of making sure that our family is healthy. One of the biggest ways to be able to build up your immune system is by exercising. Uh, there was a recent study uh, that was done uh, in the CrossFit community. There were CrossFit athletes that got the COVID-19. Uh, instead of being in the ICU for two weeks, most of these athletes were in the hospital three, four days discharged, allowed to quarantine at home, and would be COVID-free in less than two weeks. Some of them just 10 days were COVID-free. Why? Because their immune system was so strong that they were able to fight the, uh, the, the virus uh, personally, themselves. So it was, that was the main thing for me. I wanted to make sure that my family had that. If, if ever we did get the virus, we get COVID, we needed to make sure that our bodies were strong enough, our lungs were strong enough, our livers were strong enough, all of our vital organs were strong enough to fight this virus. And number one, that saves, that saves us money from getting into the hospital. General uh, idea was if you were hospitalized because of COVID-19, the most minimal amount of money that you would have to spend is around 840,000 pesos for two weeks. That was a statistic that was brought to our attention by one of the doctors here in Along Coast City. So can you imagine, working out for two hours, an hour, two hours, saves us a lot of money than going to the hospital. Yes, that's that's a lot of money, talaga, diba? Kasi ang dami mo apektuhan niya. So, yeah, it's having a prevention is better than cure. So, best uh, prevention talaga is doing the workout, um, getting your immunity strong. Wow, thank you for that, Paul. Now let's move on to Miss Anne, um, because I'm a, I'm really am an avid follower sa IG ni Miss Anne, and I saw her post. And I love the post about not only the workout, but also the jewelries. And we will also be showing some pictures of Miss Anne's designs.
So, Miss Anne, gano'n na po kayo katagal sa business na to? At bakit itong business na ang pinili niyo po? Um, total 20 years na. Uh, 10 years na I designed my own diamond settings. 10 years naman before, I've been borrowing jewelries lang from mm-hmm. a supplier. But after 10 years, I decided to design my own jewelries because I like unique designs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and probably because malaking influence yung parents ko because my mom loves jewelries. I grew up na may may jewelry na yung family. So, I have my own jewelry and then mm-hmm. able to save it. And then, after graduating college, actually, hindi ito yung course ko eh. Mm-hmm. So, malayo yung course ko sa work ko ngayon sa business ko. After graduating college, syempre, may family ka na. So, hindi ko alam po anong class yung work ang gagawin ko or business. Eh, mahilig ako sa jewelry. So, do nag-start. Dahil I like jewelries, tapos you have to make money for the family, you have to, I have to help my husband. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung start, bakit napunta ko sa jewelry. And then, I excel a lot. Actually, hindi ako graduate ng diamond uh, jeweler or whatsoever. Uh, experience lang yun sa akin. And then, I learned everything on my own. Without mm-hmm. someone punching me or whatsoever. Ang galing! So, And then, I designed my own jewelry. Tapos, may hindi ako sa mga unique designs. And then, I have a lot of clients also. So, that 20 years of my time sa jewelry business, uh, I've learned so much. And um, I always wanted to give the best for my clients. Oh, that's nice. Actually, I was looking at the juice. It's really, really, really good. Sa ang social, ang social na dating. Tapos kasi ako hindi ako hindi ako artistic na tao. So yung pagdudobing hirap na hirap na ako. Tapos magdudobing ka pan design. Tapos for jewelry, ang amazing. Actually, um, po. Actually, yung during lockdown, kasi before the lockdown, I I'll work. Probably I'll sleep lang five to six hours a day. So, during the lockdown, na-force akong magpahinga. Mm-hmm. So, yung lockdown na yun helped me na ma-realize na whatever things I need to do and uh, rest is very important. Mm-hmm. So, ju- during the lockdown, uh, kasi nga I work a lot. I, I'm very hands-on sa business ko. So, during the lockdown, marami rin ako naisip na different designs pa that I want to come up. So, yung lockdown helps me a lot. <laughs> para ma- ma-refresh din yung mind ko. So, salamat sa mga ni Miss Anne. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, so you were using really your social media. So, is, uh, do you think that helps a lot in promoting your business? Actually, social media help not that much. Pero it helps. Mm-hmm. I don't accept clients na hindi ko kakilala. Mm-hmm. Like other uh, jeweler, They, they they will accept everyone. Mm-hmm. I don't accept everyone unless kakilala namin or friends of friends. So with me, because I'm very careful with the people mm-hmm. when it comes to my business. So with me, ang most of my clients are because of I was referred by my clients. So lumaki yung network ko because of my clients also. Mm-hmm. They will always refer me to different to their families, to their friends, and to everyone. So, lumaki yung network ko from so yung sa 20 years na span ng business ko, those are my mga kakilala lang yun. Mm-hmm. Nag, nagbabranch out sa hindi ko kakilala. I so, I have clients abroad also. So, parang very exclusive yung business, you know? So, kasi parang you're more of the connections. So, malalamdaman din na clients na very personalized, very special. Ang mga ano, mga... If, if you will uh, see my post sa, sa social media, I always post lang yung mga sold items. I don't post my available items. So, those mga jewelry sandon are sold items na. Mga design ko, gawa ko. Mm-hmm. Uh, kasi uh, I want my clients to see it for themselves. Kung ano yung what I have and what I do for them. Kaya... Very exclusive yung ano ko. And at the same time, I use social media only for advertising, not for selling. 
Okay. Just for advertising. I see. And also, um, self advertising. I also saw uh, saw you advertising other business, mostly food by your friends. So and it actually this is nice. And uh, you told us that parang binibigyan na lang nila kayo ng food just to promote. So nasira po ba diet nyo ng konte? <laughs> Hindi naman. Hindi lang may crossfit. Buti. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we, 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 we keep everything in a calorie deficit. It kind of works. But yeah, we've been getting um, a lot of friends sending food. And then asking us to kind of um, just advertise them on our network of friends. But it was basically just trying to promote the local business. We're trying to help each other out. Yeah. Um, we need to. We need to help each other out. Especially locally here in the Long Coast City. We know a lot of the businessmen. A lot of hurt financially. So just, you know, we try to do our best by the help. That is nice. I actually, I think it helped, no? No po, for, for them, for those businesses. Tsaka na lumalawak din yung network nila because of yung mga advertising namin. And at the same time, that's the, that's the least that you can do to friends or to other people to advertise them. So wala kami bagay naman doon, but we're just helping out. Oh, that's nice and very helpful because most of the businesses na yon, feeling ko next start this lockdown mostly. Yeah. Uh, and yo, and it's actually nice nung siya sabi ni um, Coach Chan na hindi sila mag-advertise na hindi masarap. Kailangan masarap. Oh, yeah. oh you saw yeah, that. True. Yeah, I saw that. It's like this eh. Oh. The principle namin mag-asawa, if we keep on telling others like this is masarap or whatsoever, you buy this and that, it's like principle in business, I won't tell you if it's not true. Mm. So just advertise those na talagang masarap talaga. Kasi Ooh. I'm like that with my own business. Mm-hmm. I will always tell the clients if it's not good quality, if it's good quality. I'm very honest in, in everything. I'm very specific na sometimes Sean is tired of me seeing na I'm so specific on everything. Kasi mm-hmm. I want to be always transparent to my clients. So, yun yung principle na inaano namin when we uh, promote someone. Mm-mm. Oh, that's nice. That's a really, really good principle when it comes to business po. No? So, now, let's move on sa famous kong classmate, si Kyle. Kasi we were in the same school before. So, that time, hindi pa siya business owner. Nalama ko na kay Miss Anne nung, when I asked him for an interview. So, Kyle, what, made, uh, what is your business again and what made you want to start this business? So the business that I, the small business that I handle, the I resell or I I wholesale soap uh, detergent, I wholesale laundry detergent, I wholesale um, dishwashing soap, also wholesale kinds of disinfectants. Mm. So that's but mostly I start I started when I started the business. It was mostly just lending to my mother's side of the family. Um, only in one hotel, and then when their when their business started growing, um, I started helping with their whole the whole family's business on the with the hotels and also with the, the hardware. So I'm able to sell chlorine there. I'm also able to sell the, the laundry detergent there that they can use for because they also clean their own sheets and pillow and pillowcases. So nakatipid sila at the same time. I was able to help them. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And especially, um, nabinggit mo kanina na you also go to the hotels kasi sila talaga nangangailangan nito. And also families. So, what are your struggles when you started this business? When I started, I had no I, I had no clue what I was doing. I, okay. It was a business na binigay ng tatay ko sa akin because he thought it was, it was important that I learned to be responsible. So, I guess it was a stepping stone to, to doing something and not just stay at home every day. Walang ginagawa. And, you know, I can't rely on my parents all the time. Mm-hmm. So, ano din yun? When my dad gave me this business to to try and figure out for myself, I was able to uh, learn the importance of being on time. Mm-hmm. Sa ano din, deliveries, taking the time to handle some businesses on the side. You know, even if I have other duties, I have to be able to uh, set aside time to prioritize my small business, kahit na malit lang siya. It's important that I do these things because they translate into you know, what you do in the future. Mm-hmm. Everything that you do, even though it's small, can gradually progress into something big. So mm-hmm. it was a good opportunity that my dad gave me. 
Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So, I'm yun, parang starting from young. Pero, if you don't mind me asking, ilan taong ka na ulit po? 19. 19? Very young. So, why start early now? Kasi yung ibang kay, uh, kaibigan mo, siga, mga peers mo, doing other things like college, sports, or anything. Why start now? Why start young? Um, I guess, starting young, it was more of a decision. It was more of a decision to to not go to college. I mean, I, I personally, other people would have to go to college. Other people go to college but don't even like the course that they're taking, or maybe they were forced to take the course and they're not passionate about it. There could be cases like that. But you know, I, I personally didn't find something I was passionate about through college. I didn't find something I was pas- passionate about through a course. But I was able to find something that I enjoyed doing through. Uh, helping my family's business, being able to help at, at the gym, being able to coach at the box was something I didn't realize I liked at first, but then learned to like. And then being able to do the small business made me feel like um, I was doing something uh, worthwhile. You know, I was doing something productive instead of just doing nothing. Because other people would take their time at school and then they would laze off maybe in the afternoons or in the evenings to just play games or whatever. But I, I have time to do work I also have time to be able to relax so doing the business side also helped me be able to uh, figure out how to really take take time to what do you call this uh, being able to take time to manage my time mm-hmm. so I was able to do that and then yeah I really enjoyed just doing work instead of staying in school because I'm not very ac- academic I'm not very intellectual but I, I enjoy uh, doing the doing work that's meaningful or doing work that helps other people like at the gym. Mm-mm. And it's nice kasi diba parang kaya naman nag-aaral din mga tao to have work. Pero if you have work na naman already diba and you're already earning an income why not pursue not that that na already. And also ano yung tips mo sa mga hatay natin na naghahanap din ng other ways to earn during this new normal? Uh, that's up to them that they have to find something that they're passionate about. It. If it's 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 worthless to find to do something that you aren't passionate about. You know, there's many ways that you can um, find a something to do, something productive, whether it's work or not. But you know, take the time to use this opportunity. You're still at home. We're forced to stay at home, especially for those who are my age. Mm-hmm. We have to stay at home. So taking the time to do something that they're passionate about, and whether it's cooking, that they maybe they could find a way to sell that, sell mm-hmm. something that they're passionate about, or maybe it's something like. Um, taking up a new course like a small lesson that they can find on YouTube on how to program or whatever something that they can find enjoyable and passionate and something that maybe can help others at the same time I think it's that, that's one thing that's very important when trying to find something that can be like work because if you sign, if you find something that you're passionate about it doesn't feel like work it feels like a hobby instead mm. and, and you get paid at the same time so that's uh, an upside to it Totoo, totoo yan. Kasi di ba, if you have, mag start ka sa passion mo, sa hobby mo, and then make a living out of it, sobrang panalo na yun. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Nabayin po tayo kay Coach Han, kasi ang isa pa na napapabayaan ng mga tao during this lockdown, kalusugan nila, nauso yung term na flatten the curve. Ayan. And it pertains to COVID cases, actually. Pero dahil um, witty ang mga Pinoy, nilitiral na nila yung flatten the curve na tumutukoy sa belly fat, bill bill. So, ano yung ma... ano yung ma... Um, may sasuggest nyo sa mga tao na um, uh, napapabayan ng kalusugan, kailangan ba yung kanilang mindset ay magpapayat? Or may other um, stronger motivation for them to do that? Basically, um, with, with the COVID-19, just it once you get hit, the percentages of, of um, especially for those who are immunocompromised, the, the percentages of fatalities, is a, it's a big thing. Um, before, the idea was if you're young and, and you get hit with COVID, you're, you'll survive. Like Statistics are, are showing that even teenagers and young adults are dying from COVID-19. So during this period of time, don't make leaps and bounds. Let's keep things simple. One, eat a healthy diet. Stay away from all of the processed food. Uh, That's the number one thing I would definitely recommend. Immunocompromised patients are usually the ones that are diabetic, hypertensive, um, cancer patients. So if you're diabetic, stay away from sugar, stay away from flour, uh, whole foods, 
uh, vegetables and fruits, definitely you want to stick to that. Um, and, and do not uh, misconcept the idea that vitamins are not important. A lot of the things that we eat nowadays, nowadays are deprived of vitamins. So it's definitely important to, to get a, a multivitamin or some vitamin C and some zinc and make sure that you're consuming this on a daily basis. At this point in time during this COVID problem, the only thing we need to be focusing on is survival. So survival by staying as healthy as possible and that starts with good nutrition. Whole foods, stay away from those that are processed and you'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you, Paul. Yeah. Okay, now let's um go to Miss Anne. Kasi madami na dadahilan na kasi may health limits daw sila. Um, hindi na sila magpapahapagod, hindi na sila magbubuhat. But at the end here has mild scoliosis. Is that right, Paul? Hindi lang mild. Ay, Ay po, ano din siya. Hindi lang mild, mas more than mild. <laughs> Wow! Really? Really? I saw that. Just... So, I mean, when I was carrying my weights, I didn't have to I see, I saw that. But, like you mentioned, you are lifting weights and also push up, push up and pull ups. I was amazed by that. And we will be showing you, you those videos. Okay, so Miss Anne, how do you do it? Um, because it takes time, then eh, proper training. Because before I can only carry five pounds, and I'm crying. I complain to Sean, na why do I need to exercise and things like that? Because I used to weigh 210 pounds before. Hmm? Na very huge ako. So imagine a 210 pound woman, na napaka lahe, tapos carrying weights. Ang bigat ko na nga, magkikerry pa ako ng 5 pounds for me. So heavy. Yeah. Before. Pero now, I can carry a lot of heavier weights. Oh, yeah. Kasi, because of proper training. So, mm-hmm. proper training yung key. And at the same time, being committed to really putting the time and effort to work out. Kasi mahirap na you want to be something, pero you're not doing any effort. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. So, sabi niyo po, before, 210 pounds kayo. Pero anong weight niyo po ngayon, if you don't mind me asking? 160. I still need to lose a lot of weight. Pero, <laughs> that's a big mm. number already. Kasi, Mm-mm. I have hypothyroidism. So, kahit hindi ako kumain, I'm gonna gain weight. So, mm-hmm. imagine that. So, I, I really need to put more effort in working out. So, hindi lang basa-basa workout. Talaga, I really push myself to um, beyond my limit. Parang gano'n. That's nice. So, my trainer kasi is here eh. Yes. Yeah. with me. Mm-hmm. Kaya, from the start until now, he's the one training me. So, oh. I'm accomplished because of him. Ay, ba din motivation eh. Love of your life eh. Yung magmumotivate. <laughs> Hindi so, ba? <laughs> yeah. Ngayon lang ako bumawas ng malaki kasi when Sean became a nutritionist, doon talaga namin in-associate yung food namin and then working out. So, mas mabilis yung pagbayad. Hmm. Di kagaya before, parang exercise ako na exercise tapos nagpa-plateau lang ako. Tapos nakaka-dishearten kasi we put in a lot of ano, time for working out tapos hindi ka naman pumapayat. So, yung diet, proper diet, and then working out. 
Kasi mm-hmm. not like other gyms. Kasi other gyms parang ano lang sila parang normal lang yung exercise nila eh. Crossfit kasi is different. Ma- marami kami exercise na different everyday. Iba-iba yung ginagawa. So, malaking tulong yun para mas mabilis yung pagpaya. Ito o. Oh. Nag- so, shortcut nga pala. Walang shortcut. Walang diet pills and everything. Talagang diet and exercise lang. Oo. Oh. Now, kasi nung nag-visit nga po kami sa inyo, we did CrossFit. It's really nice. Di ba? Na- medyo nakakapagod, pero nakakahappy. <laughs> yes. Ito na lang po. Ano yung pinakamabigat na weight na, I mean, barbell ba ang tawag doon? Na nag-release nyo na ngayon? Um, sa akin ba? Or? Sige, sa inyo po, isa-isa. Si ah, Alex. Uh, siguro sa akin, sa, sa deadlift ko, 200... Yeah, 250, 260. So, 60, 260 pounds. 200. Sa deadlift. Sa, sa ano naman, clean. I can clean mga 125 pounds. Tapos sa uh, what do you call that push press? Mm-hmm. I think I can carry 130 pounds. Yung mm-hmm. last ko, I, I tried 130 pounds. So imagine from 5 pounds to that, that ano, number. Malaking progress talaga. Yeah, actually, so strong. Now, when we have to partner people up at the box for workouts, I can't partner her up with with another girl because the, the strength levels are different so I have to partner her up with a guy and then the guy gets demoralized because she carries more weight than him so it, it's scary so yes yeah I was proper training lang mm-hmm. I see so alamin na din natin ang binubuhat na weight alam ko si Coach Sean ang bigat-bigat ng, ng binubuhat eh. kaya unahin mo na natin si Sean Si Isi Sean. I mean, si Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> Magkamukha kasi sila. Okay. <laughs> Kyle, gano'n nakabigat yung weights na binubuhat mo ngayon? If I'm basing it on... So, I, would, I usually base weights depending on my deadlift, my, my squat, and my clean. So, my deadlift... Not as heavy as mom's. It's only 200, around 235, 225. Um, my back squat is 215, which was when I started. Um, when I started, when the quarantine started, I was only able to do squat. So on my back, I had the barbell on my back, and I would squat only 195. At the time, that was my heaviest. And I wanted to reach this goal of 215 um, within two months or three months and I was able to hit that goal uh, one month after my goal so in, in four months I mean I made it my goal to hit 215 which I did so I can squat 215 and I can clean around 155 so that's picking it from the ground mm-hmm. and then putting it on top of my uh, on top of my shoulders on a front rack position so that's how heavy I can carry so far. And if I carry overhead like a push press, my heaviest would be around 135. Oh, wow. Ang bigat na din. Wow. Ngayon, kay Coach Shan, gano'n na po kabigat yung mga weights? Um, I've, I've always, so it's it's a it's an ongoing journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, my deadlift, I think, is now at 360, 360 pounds. I, uh, uh, my clean is 230. Um, my back squat is 240, 345, um, but I always have, I, ho- I have these like lifetime pounds, I want to deadlift 500 pounds, uh, so these are things I, I my goals as I go along. Um, weightlifting is, is a journey, it's not a destination, so I enjoy every workout, I try to just get as, as strong as possible. These, uh, Kyle and, and Anne are doing great, you know, they're leaps and strides in their lifts. So they're they're very encouraging in the box. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are scared to carry weights when they see our posts. It's mm-hmm. like scary for them na it's impossible for them to do. That's what I thought then before. It's impossible for me to carry ten pounds. Mm-hmm. Now I'm carrying more than one. So it's not impossible. Because ang ang key lang jan is um, you have a good trainer and then. Uh, 
at the same time in proper training, proper technique. So you can carry weights na mabibigat basta you have the proper te- technique. Mm, I see. But not everyone can do that. I mean, they can um I have scoliosis, but I can do it. And yeah. anyone can lift weights. Anyone children can lift weights. It's scientifically proven. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not bad for children to lift weights. Mm-hmm. It's not bad for teenagers to lift weights. It's not bad for older people to uh, lift weights. Uh, actually, um, for those who are older, you want this is the time to try to avoid sarcopenia, uh, which is basically um, the the degeneration of the bones. Uh, mm-hmm. And one of the best ways to do that is to lift weights. The oldest individual that I've worked with. Uh, to carry weights is 73 years old. He's he's Irish. He's back in Ireland now. Uh-huh. And uh, right now we're we're helping a 67 year old uh, uh, diabetic and hypertensive uh, client uh, to lift weights. Well, she's lifting weights now. So there's no age. Anyone can lift weights. You just need to have proper technique, uh, a good coach, a good environment, mm-hmm. and and determination, and you can do this. Yes, and sabi nyo nga, kasi lifting weights is um, a journey, parang ganun, yeah. di po ba? So, hindi, hindi ka naman bigla magbubuhat na lang na mabigat mm-hmm. out of nowhere, di ba? Mag-i-start ka muna sa mas mababa, tindi, tatas ng tataas. Yeah, kasi like my mom, takot siya. Pag pinapakita ko minsan yung lifting ni uh, Miss Anne, natakot siya. Pero so, ano yung mababa, masasabi nyo sa mga moms out there? na minsan dahil nasa bahay na lang, minsan napapabayaan na sarili nila. Ano yung mai, um, ma, isa suggest nyo, may i-advise sa nila to keep on um, being active as moms? Kasi most of the people that we talk to, ang reason nila lagi is, I don't have time to do that or I'm scared to do that. So they have to take that mentality out. Kasi if we don't really put time on something, talagang wala kang time. That's my reason also before. So I really, a lot, kasi sa CrossFit, you only have to work out for an hour. That's it. So it will, you have, we have 24 hours a day. So if you put one hour a day, probably five times a week, so you'll see a very big result. And then you'll be able to progress a lot. So mm-hmm. ang, ang mapapayo ko din sa kanila, kasi you have, like me, I'm thinking about my health. I want to be healthy even though na I have the scoliosis, I have other problems. So and I feel great at the same time. So you have to think of your health, your family, especially nowadays with COVID-19. So you have to be mindful about how you should take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. So you need number one motivation to it. Not to lose weight, but it comes with it also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that po. Now, uh, balik tayo kay, uh, kay Kyle. Ano naman mapapayo mo sa mga younger katry natin na hindi motivated na mag-workout? Kasi naisip nila bata pa ako. Siguro sa kanila kapag medyo tumanda-tanda na ako. Kasi madusok pa naman ako ngayon. Ano masasabi mo sa kanila? Uh, well, when I was younger, I started rushing. I started working out there exercising more often when I was younger. Around, I think 2014. So it's been six years more or less na I've been working out inconsistent though so when I was when, it, when my dad introduced it to me first I had to do it I think every afternoon I never wanted to so I had no motivation to work out for for the for five years I think I had zero motivation to actually put in the effort to work out it was only when I took up the licensing for uh, for our affiliate that I started taking it seriously, I guess. It was around last year. So last year, I, I, I took a test plus a training seminar for two days in Manila. And you know, I was able to pass the test with my dad. Um, so we got licensed. And then when we opened our box or our, our reopen our gym, we were able to start using the things that we learned from our seminar. We also learned from reviewing from all the study we did and from practical use of you know since we've been exercising for a long time we were able to put it into a practical sense so we actually started figuring out how forms were important and stuff like that so these things these small things for me motivated me to to do more exercising because when i started looking at how i can help myself you know i started seeing how how it was beneficial for me 
I wanted to be able to share that with other people. So there's like this one student in the gym right now who um, has no motivation to work out, and then but he was he he wants to. He just if he feels like there's no motivation, he can't find it. So we were able to talk about it uh, yesterday. We we were able to really just take the opportunity to help tell him to just take a step into doing it. You know, sometimes you don't need to be motivated; you just need to take action. Mm-hmm. Because if you're gonna be waiting for the motivation and it doesn't come, you're just gonna find it's just not working. So sometimes you just need to take action. So I told him that he just needs to come back, and then you know, over time he'll find that motivation. So yeah. So for me, my motivation is I want to help other people, and I want to be able to to help them get over that. Um, or you, you you need an excuse. Sometimes you don't need an excuse because you need, scientifically it's proven that. Exercise can help you, or help you the body, and it's very helpful um, for health-wise. That's why you really don't. There's no motivation. You just need to do it. It's already beneficial. You just need to take action. So, if I were to um, give any advice to those young, those who are listening to this now, especially those who are 19 or younger, I started when I was 14. So, honestly, you just need to be able to take action. You just need to be able to do it because if you start now, it's gonna Help you in the long run. If you mm-hmm. wait till later, you're gonna regret it because you're just going to be looking at yourself, comparing yourself to other people who started earlier, and you're gonna feel like I can't reach that. When in fact you can. You just need to be able to take time, be patient, and you, know, you can eventually reach whatever goal you have in mind. Mm-hmm. Just ko yun. Just ayon sinabi mo na minsan hindi mo kailangang um, yung motivation. You just need to get started. Kasi siguro along that way, mahikita mo yung motivation mo and why you have to do that. So yeah, thank you for that. And thank you po for uh, for everyone uh, for everyone for doing this interview with me. And I hope madami na tutuin ang mga hatay natin. Kasi ako, sobrang-sobrang dami ko na tutunan. So meron po ba kayong gustong i-plug or batiin and how can they reach you? Um, kayo po, um. Uh, like say hi to everybody at Tribe PH and everyone who's listening from around the world. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, all of the, the shows that are shown here, very informative and can help you out. Uh, if you're looking towards uh, working out and you're not in the Long Beach city, mm-hmm. uh, try to look for a CrossFit box anywhere in any city. Um, there's always a CrossFit box. If there's not a CrossFit box, go to find a gym, work out, take your dog for a walk. Uh, do something, just get active, take, take 10,000 steps, and um, and try to eat as healthy as possible, please. Try to get as, as healthy as possible by eating eating good and full foods, please. Mm-mm. Thank you, Paul. And how about you, Miss Anne? Um, they can add me to Haskell Jewelry, not on my personal account, but Haskell Jewelry page. Haskell Jewelry Store page. Mm-hmm. FB and IG. Yeah, so we will be flashing your um, social media accounts here and also on the caption so that they can follow you. How about you, Kyle? I don't have any uh, any business that I want to endorse, but I'd like to say uh, thank you to the friends who were able to watch this, those who uh, supported Atelier's channel and also Atelier's um, uh, efforts to be able to interview us. And thank you for watching. Uh, the interview, the whole interview, we made it this far. Thank you for taking the time to be able to listen to our journey, and for those in, who are trying to find a, a, a way to start a business or maybe trying to find an, an excuse to start uh, getting motivated to work out, to take the action. To start, you know, every journey starts with taking that first step. You just need to be able to get your foot through the door and, and just start. The hardest part is starting. The second hardest part is consistency. So when you start. Eventually, you learn to be consistent, and then you'll be okay. Mm, thank you. So, ito na lang po, Lesna. Pwede niyo po bang um, say our tagline with me? You'll never know unless you try. Can you do that? Sure. Okay. okay. Sabay, sabay. Sabay, sabay. One. Wait. One, two, three, go. You'll never, you'll never know, know unless you try. Unless you try. Thank you, po. <laughs> Lahat tayo naapektuhan ng pandemic na to. Hindi man tayo nagkasakit, naapektuhan naman ang ating kabuhayan. Kaya kailangan natin maging creative sa ating business. And speaking of creative, ang guest natin next week has a creative product that I personally love. At alam ko magugustuhan niyo rin. 
At isa pa, bago tayo matapos, magpapasalamat ako sa mga kaibigan ko who brainstorm ideas with me for this topic. Salamat po Kuya Jerry, Shikaila, TJ, and Ate Jedi. At babatiin ko na din ang aking number one audience. Again, this is your new normal to try host Leanne reminding you that new normal has posed us these uncertainties, but these uncertainties can also create new possibilities. Kaya subukan lang natin, because you'll never know.